Thanks, everybody. Hello, everyone. My name is Keith Nav from Affordable Medicare Solutions, and I enjoy coming to teach uh, today. I teach about 100 Medicare classes a year. I teach to social workers and nurses and financial planners, but I teach about half my classes to consumers because Medicare is very confusing and it keeps changing. And so I want you to understand that uh, I have a very unusual agency. It is uh, in Swanee, Georgia. I have eight employees. We're getting ready to add a ninth. And we've been around for 25 years. And our agency acts as a Medicare resource center. If you look at the cards, the green card that's uh, there on the desk, it says that our service is a free planning service for our clients. There are no charges. And we can't say that unless it was true. And I enjoy this business. I'm not a social worker, but this really feels like social work, dealing with social benefits and helping people to understand without having to charge them a fee. So it's very unusual. I have about 5,000 clients and we're growing and I also um, assist other agents in my industry. I actually teach at conventions to help them to understand this because they don't get enough training. So this is a, a great pleasure to be here and we're gonna talk Medicare today in a way that is very compliant because Medicare is very, very strict. And even though this says beginner's guide to Medicare, this is a truly a complete guide talk about but right off the bat medicare makes me say this to you this is for educational purposes only who here has received their new medicare book the 2020 guide this week all right that is not the complete information on medicare okay but it's great very few people read the whole thing but medicare has a website medicare.gov where the complete information is available so i present as a public service also we're not going to be talking about any company names today we're not going to talk about plans or prices, but today is October 1st, and all of those new plans for 2020 are available at the Medicare website, medicare.gov. Okay, I do not work for Medicare. I own my own uh, private agency, and um, additional educational flyers are available up here. And did everyone receive the three flyers from the back table as you came in? Did you get yours? All right, good. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Now, here's the, here's the history of Medicare. Some of you have already been in Medicare for a while. Some of you don't know anything about it, but it's important to understand the history of why it was started the way it was, because Medicare is really unlike any other health system. And we're gonna go over some of those differences, but let's go back to 1965, the year before I was born. Medicare and healthcare, uh, healthcare was totally different in those days. Most everything was done at the hospital. My, my dad's a retired doctor, and he said people would go into the hospital and they would do most of their services. Very little bit was done on an outpatient basis. But Medicare was created back then, and it was designed to be a uh, retirement health system for people 65 and older. It is not the same as group health insurance. Is anyone here still working and having Medicare alongside their employment insurance? No. Okay, you can do that. You can have employer insurance and Medicare at the same time. You can have Medicare and Medicaid, which is a uh, state and federal program for the poor. You can have those together. You can have veterans benefits with your Medicare. They can exist side by side, but you cannot have the Affordable Care Act plans. So there was about 400,000 people in the United States that were riding on Affordable Care Act plans and not switching over to Medicare, and then you can't do that. And they, and they gave them some grace and didn't find them, and now there'll be fines for doing that and uh, penalties for doing that. Very now, Medicare, when it was designed, it was designed just for people 65 and older originally. And, and if you've been paying your taxes for 10 years, your Medicare, uh, part of your Medicare is free and also for your spouse that was non-working. But people raised their hand and said, what about Joe? He got hurt at the factory. He's 52 years old. He's not going to work anymore. Well, they said, okay, we'll extend it to someone who is on disability, social security disability income for two years, 24 months, a Medicare card just shows up in their mailbox. So I help people, a lot of people, there's 9 million people that are under 65 getting Medicare early, and I'll help them use the Affordable Care Act plan for a year or two, and then graduate them into Medicare. Very few people know how to do that. Uh, very few uh, social workers understand that. So that's the number two type of eligibility. Sometimes the, jo the judges make them, uh, the benefits start even earlier to help the people out. But if somebody has Lou Gehrig's disease or kidney failure, they need health care immediately. You know, if you need dialysis, you need it right away. So they are already added the third category where they're adding people that with certain health conditions, giving them Medicare very quickly, maybe as early as four months into their diagnosis. Okay. 
So they're adding some more uh, um, categories to that soon. They're studying those right now. Because it's cruel. It's cruel not to give someone the help they need when it's available. Why wait 24 months? You're going to give it to them anyway. This is where Medicare was different than everything else. When they started it, they started Medicare. They started having hospital coverage as the primary coverage. If you look at a Medicare red, white, and blue card, it says hospital part A. No other health plan does this. Your group health plan, your personal health plan, none of them do this. To have hospital part A and outpatient medical B. And this is because when Medicare was started, they thought the outpatient wasn't that important. It was a very small, okay. But today, half of, more than half of Medicare spending is outpatient. You don't go to the hospital for observation for a week. They just do an MRI on you and find what's going on with your pancreas or, or your intestines. You don't do those things inpatient anymore. You do it outpatient. I just had a heart CT scan. Walked into Emory, paid 100 bucks, and walked out. It's a miracle, you know? It was at the hospital, but that's outpatient. That's outpatient care. Well, there is a fee for that. Under Medicare, the standard fee for outpatient portion of Medicare is $135.50 per month. And that fee can change, that premium can change each year. But what is next year? It's an election year, right? I think they're probably gonna manage to make sure that there's no shock to the system during an election year because what do seniors do? Vote, and they take all their friends to vote, right? So this is really important. They vote in primaries, they vote in uh, the, the, the regular elections, et cetera. So the government's very sensitive to this. It is tied to politics quite a bit. So watch that, that premium can change. We're going to talk about also high income penalties later on in this talk about how that premium can either go up or down depending on your income. Any questions about Part A and Part B? No other health plan does this. So Medicare realized that they were about 15 or 20 years behind the curve. In the year 2000, they realized that all the other health systems like group health insurance had started changing in the 1980s and 1990s. Finally, in the year 2000, they started studying about the baby boomers getting ready to graduate into Medicare, and they're like, we've got a problem here. We set up a system that was just meant to pay bills. It wasn't an interactive health system. It wasn't utilizing some of the new techniques, and we're going to have a massive problem of being over budget and, and not being modern. And so Medicare said, we need to start making changes. But again, Medicare said, we're going to make these changes optional because we don't want to upset seniors that were currently on Medicare, about 35 million seniors that were on Medicare in the year 2003 to 2005. Medicare had a modernization act that was passed in 03, and in 2005 they started implementing it. And everything in that act basically was optional. Do you want drug coverage? It's an option. Do you want to try out new plans? Those are optional. Do you want to stay where you are in your old plans? Fine, you can stay there. If you compare that to the Affordable Care Act where everything was mandatory, it gives you an example of how the government can get it right and get it wrong. One massive section of the government with 35 million people, they gently said, we're gonna start modernizing this over 20 years from 2005 to 2025. And as we go along, we're gonna tweak it. Whereas the Affordable Care Act, they put everything in overnight and the apple cart got upset. And that's when you hear in the news all the problems, this hospital and these doctors and, and all the fights is almost always around the Affordable Care Act. Very little turbulence in the Medicare world. Very little. It's very stable, and I enjoy the business because it's not the craziness that I experienced 2013, 14, 15, 16, dealing with thousands of clients under the Affordable Care Act. Um, it's been a huge changeover. So Medicare is modernizing over 20 years. We're, we're, nearing, we're nearing the year 2020 here. Got another five or six years, and we know what's coming in 2020. I'll talk about that in a minute. So pathway one, we call that traditional Medicare. Pathway number two is the new modernizing effort of Medicare. Since Medicare was not modernizing, insurance companies said, we are hearing people complain back in the 1970s and 80s, and the insurance companies love to hear pain, and they'll say, we'll sell you something to fix that pain, right? Mm -hmm. And they created a bunch of little insurance policies, willy-nilly, all over the whole United States, and they became called Medicare supplements. They're little policies that supplemented this government program. And they became nicknamed Medigap plans because they, because they filled the gaps in Medicare. If you go into your Medicare book that they send you, they use those terms interchangeably. Well, the government realized there was a chaos. There were policies being sold all around the United States of different types, so they finally standardized those in the 1980s. 
and they made a mistake. Remember how I told you that Medicare was using Part A for hospital and Part B for uh, outpatient? Well, now they said, we're going to start calling these plans with letter codes also. So you have on your desk a blue-green sheet that says Medigap plan. Do you see that? Plan? And if you look on the back, there's a whole host of letter codes that'll make your eyes cross. Okay? Don't worry about the whole back of the sheet. We're going to talk about the front where it says plan F, plan G, and plan N. Okay? And I'm going to make sure you don't fall prey to some misinformation that's out there. But let's look at this before I get going. That means you have your Medicare Part A and Part B card. Now you have this Medigap plan that's also a letter code. I wish they'd use Roman numerals or something else. And now you also can add a drug plan to that. That's a three card system. Nowhere else do you see where you have to carry three cards to show your medical kit coverage. On your group health plan, you go to the pharmacist, you show a card, you go to your doctor, your emergency room, it's the same card. But here you've got three different cards you're gonna be showing if you're doing traditional Medicare today. Half of my clients do this, okay? Now let's talk about what this, what a problem that's going on where people are getting confused this year. And there's a scam going on. There's Robocalls. I'm sure most of you are getting robocalls, right? Mm -hmm. Telemarketing uh, calls. So one scam that's going around is that, hey, Mrs. Johnson, you're losing your Medicare supplement on January 1st. The government's got a revision. We need to move you from your Plan F supplement down to Plan G because you don't want to be without coverage, do you? Oh, no, no, I want my coverage. Okay, well, uh, we just need to get your Medicare number and your bank account and your home address and everything, and we'll get you switched over. Don't ever talk to anybody over the phone like that, okay? Unless, unless it's me, you know. You can trust <laughs> I'm not going to call people like that. That's illegal to call people like that, right? But people are doing it because the government is getting rid of Plan F, Medicare Supplement, for younger people. I will never get it. But if you already have Plan F, like 10 million seniors do, you can keep your plan. And if you ever want to shop and get a better price on your Plan F and go from company A to company B and get a different plan F, you're allowed to do that the rest of your life. But younger people starting January 1st, if you're not already 65, will never get the option to get plan F. But for the last three years, most all of my clients have been choosing plan G anyway. And why would they do that? They would do that because it's a great deal, okay? And it makes sense. Plan F and plan G are twin brothers, except for one small difference. The outpatient portion of Medicare has a deductible of $185 per year. So if you go under Plan G, you're going to have to pay that $185. But if you save a bunch of money, $500 or $1,000, it's, it's worth it. So I have a, a lady who came into my office a couple months ago. She's 84 years old. And she said, I'm really frustrated, Keith. I've tried twice to go from Plan F to Plan G, and I keep getting turned down. And my friend, my neighbor, said, you can fix this for me. And I'm like, I don't know. Why did you get turned down? She says, I had breast cancer three and a half years ago. And I said, well, who did you apply to? She said, the red company turned me down, and then I applied to the blue company. I'm sure you can probably figure out who I'm talking about. And I said, yeah, of course they were going to turn you down. Both of those companies asked if you've had breast cancer in the last five years. She goes, well, they didn't tell me that. They wasted my time. And I said, yeah, well, unfortunately that happened. And I said, well, she goes, well, who's going to take me then? And I said, well, I don't know. I need to go into my system. I have an online subscription system that I subscribe to, and I put in her information. It says, here's 15 companies, 12 will not take her. Here's the three that will. So we chose a major name, A-rated company, and I thought she was going to get standard rates and save $61 a month. Well, that's $730 a year. That'd been a great deal. When she got approved, she got preferred rates, and I love this, she's 84, and she saved $84 a month. It was meant to be, right? That's a thousand bucks a year. And she goes, I'm going to live 10 more years. I'm like, good, let's positive thinking. She goes, that's $8,000 I'm going to save. About $800 a year after she's paying her deductible. It's a good thing if you can move to plan G, but you're not required to. You can keep your plan F if you want it. Okay. I've had a conversation with a client at least 10 times. He's like, are you sure it's okay to move to plan G? I'm like, yes, it's okay. And he keeps asking me that. Any questions? Anybody gotten that scam yet? Anybody seen that stuff? Okay. Be careful. All right. Let's go to the next slide. So are we yep. on automatically on plan F? No. 10 million people out of the 15 million people that have these Medicare supplements, so 66% of people have plan F. Most seniors have plan F, but it's not automatic. It's your choice. 
Okay? Now, if it were five years ago and you signed up for your Medicare and bought your Medigap plan, Plan G wasn't available around here. So it's okay. Most people have chosen Plan F. But in the last three years, most people aren't. Okay? The younger seniors are, are looking at the, the difference and are choosing Plan G. Okay? And that's because of the lower rates? Yeah, you, get, you save money, a lot more money. It's a much better deal if you can qualify for it. Okay? So, yes, sir. Is that... Uh... They're getting Plan G because Plan F isn't available anymore? No, Plan F is always going to be available mm -hmm. for people who have already been 65 before January 1st of 2020. Always going to be available. <coughs> so what you're but saying? now Plan G has come out in the market, and Plan G from the same companies is now available. What you're saying is that people who have Plan F will be better served by moving to Plan G? Almost always that's the case. Yes, ma'am. What does Plan G cover? Same thing as Plan F. If you look at the sheet, the sheet that I have there, if you look on the back, it shows you they cover exactly the same things. The only difference is that small outpatient deductible one, one time per year. What is Plan F? Plan F is a Medicare supplement that covers what Medicare leaves behind. A Medicare supplement covers your hospital deductible, your rehab co-pays for your rehabilitation, your blood, your outpatient services, uh, your ambulance, your physical therapy, all of the things that Medicare doesn't, that either covers at 80% and leaves 20% behind, the supplement pays those bills for you. Is it different than the base? Is it different than supplemental bills? If you look on the chart, it shows you all the letter codes available for the Medicare supplements. Okay? A supplement is on top of Medicare Part A and Part B. The supplement picks up what Medicare leaves behind. Okay, we're going to go over that in the next, in the next couple of slides, okay? But I want you to first grab the other sheet that I gave you. It's got the two cute grandmothers on it. Yes, sir? I don't know whether I have it or not. It'll show on your ID card. It'll generally say Medicare Supplement Plan F, and if it doesn't, call your customer service number and ask them what letter code you are on, and they will tell you, okay? Good question. All right? Now we're on to the next slide, but we're going to look at the next flyer, the next sheet that I gave you. And this is where you're going to get some more of your questions answered, okay? I just described on the left-hand side original Medicare. We're going to go over that in detail. And on the right-hand side, it says modernized Medicare. But let's look at the screen. Under modernized Medicare, Medicare calls this the Advantage system, but if you go to the Medicare website, Medicare calls these Medicare Health Plans. Remember when I told you traditional Medicare is a bill payment system, the new side of Medicare was designed to be more holistic, a more total health plan. And so that's why they call these health plans. These were created in 2005, and they've been modernized and modernized in 2010, getting modernized again this next year. But you still have to have your Part A and Part B of Medicare in place. You will not show your Medicare card anymore. You'll get a single ID card from your company that is your Medicare health plan, and your drug coverage will be built in, and a bunch of extra coverage we'll go over will be built in, but it's a single health plan card instead of carrying three cards. And if you've ever heard of a Medicare HMO or a Medicare PPO, this is what they're talking about. This is where you'll have a list of doctors to choose from. An HMO means a mandatory list that you have to use unless it's an emergency. A PPO, means it is an optional list that you, you use the list, you get a better deal, or you can go to any doctor that accepts Medicare if you want to go off the list, okay, if the doctor's willing to see you. So we're going to go into detail on this, on this next screen, but people overthink these, and I'm going to make it simple for you. So don't, don't get confused yet. Watch. Remember, half of people at age 65 are choosing traditional Medicare, and now half are choosing the new side of Medicare. In Atlanta, if you look at all the seniors, including the 105-year-olds, it's 40% of all seniors have chosen the new plan. But at age 65, it's 50-50, okay? And there are no signs of these plans going away. So this is where people get confused and overthink this. Pay very close attention. There's three things that you, the main three things that you have to worry about here is what doctor can I see? How much is the plan going to cost me in the middle? each month out of my budget. And the last column is, how much is it gonna cost me when I get sick to get better? So who can I see? What's my monthly budget? And what's it gonna cost me if I get sick? So 
So let's use Keith as an example, myself. I am not on Medicare. I'm on an Affordable Care Act insurance plan. I have a $6,700 deductible. Yep, I see people's mouths drop. <laughs> And I had a, two, I finally, after waiting for years and years and years, I have an old soccer injury. I damaged my nose and I needed to get it fixed. And I said, I need to get this done. And he said, it's, write me a check for $6,700. I said, okay. And then they did my surgery. It was a $12,000 surgery, one hour outpatient deal. The doctor drives a very nice Porsche. <laughs> <laughs> and I think he did about 10 of those surgeries that day. And I, really wish I'd spent, I love it to fix my nose, but I really wish I didn't have a $6,700 deductible to pay. Well, when Medicare created the new side of Medicare, they said, we want to get away from deductibles because the old side of Medicare has deductibles. That's why you have a Medicare supplement is to cover your deductibles. So let's look at what happens here. If, if Keith had been on Medicare and I would have used traditional Medicare, I would have first picked a Medicare doctor that, it, that is willing to see me. Does every doctor take new patients? Okay, so you got to look at that. And then I would have had my Medicare supplement between $150 to $200 per month, way better than the $600 a month I'm spending on my Affordable Care Act plan. But I would have been able to say my nose was free. I would have bragged I got a free nose, right? Because I would have had 100% coverage on that surgery. If I would have instead been under a Medicare Advantage PPO plan, I've got 2,500 clients on these plans, about 12 have HMOs. Virtually all of my clients that do this use a PPO so that they could choose any Medicare doctor nationally. I would have looked on my list. My doctor was actually on the Medicare PPO plan, so I would have been able to use him. My Medicare Advantage plan would not be $600 a month. It would be $0 per month on most plans around Atlanta. They run between $0 to $60 per month around here. But I would not have been able to say my nose was free. I would have had to say my nose cost $400. Either one of these is better than the $6,700 I spent on my nose. Same surgery, same doctor and everything, right? You can win an election just by campaigning on removing the most hated thing in health insurance. The most hated thing in health insurance is deductibles, period. You can become president just by running on that one campaign promise. And that's what they did in the advantage system. They got rid of the deductibles. So you still have to have a risk though. Your risk in the year, if you have a lot of healthcare, cancer and strokes and other problems, you could end up spending over $6,000 on your health care, but it would be really hard to get there, okay? So we'll go over that. Now let's talk about what Clark Howard says. Clark Howard is a hero of mine, and he makes it even simpler. All things in life, you can either pay now or pay later. You can prepay for things. You can buy a timeshare and then brag you have free vacations. They're not free, right? You can get a free refrigerator by buying a warranty, or you can pay as you go along. I buy my vacations every year by shopping, looking for what's on sale, and I pay as I go along. My brother bought a timeshare, and he always says he goes to Florida for free, and I say, no, you don't, but that's all right, okay? This is the way you compare these things. Of course, it's a little more detailed than that, but remember, those are your three main categories. We're going to go over some more details here. Any questions before I leave this screen? All right, good. Now go to the next one. Before you get excited about anything, on October 10th, we're excited this year. They're actually releasing quality star ratings under Medicare early this year on October 10th. And that tells us whether a plan is a one or two star rated plan, which is below average or poor, or three and four stars, which is average or above average, or five stars, which is a rare occurrence. In 14 years, we've had two times we've had plans that have a five star rating. Rare occurrence. We don't have any this year. So this is important. Your own plan mails you a letter to tell you their star rating. If you open up the letter, which people a lot of times don't, but open the letter, and it says, we stake, we're a two-star plan, you need to pay attention to that. Last year, we had a couple two-star plans. You need to pay attention, all right? Yes. So before I go deep, deep, <coughs> deep diving into drugs, which is the most popular topic these days, anybody have any further questions about that, about the difference between traditional Medicare and modernized Medicare. Yes, sir. Keith, do any of those plans pay for like long-term care? We're going to go over that at the end. Okay. okay, thank you very much. Cool financial guy, thank you. Now, this is very important. We're going to go to the next uh, sheet that I gave you, and it says, the red sheet, it says how to create 
a Medicare plan finder account. This is important. The government this year knows there's 42 million people that have Medicare drug coverage. There's 63 million people in Medicare. 42 million have a drug plan and only 2 million or 5% have created their online login for Medicare. And the government wants you to do it and it's a good thing, okay? Because they will be able, once you do that, they'll be able to pull out of the cloud, out of the ether, all the data and say, hey, we see that you're on this drug plan using this pharmacy and you're for next year, push go here, and we'll tell you the right drug plan for next year. They are automating it. A lot of the work I've been doing manually is going to become automated. A lot of people call me and say, Mom had a stroke, she's moving here, I don't know what she has. We could just go create a Medicare login and it'll show us what she has, no matter what state she lives in. So this would be really empowering and it's gonna keep getting more and more information in there. You should do this, and it's not hard. And what it does for you is what we're going to go over the next screen is it's going to keep you from getting all cross-eyed over the way Medicare drug benefit works. It's the most confusing drug benefit ever conceived, right? I see heads nodding out there, okay? <laughs> Medicare, when they set up the Medicare drug benefit, they were worried it was going to break the federal budget. They didn't know how many people were going to sign up for it, so they put in a lot of weird stops and gaps and stuff so that it would, it would, it would put the brakes on it in case it started going out of control. So what Medicare set up was basically you have an initial bucket of money to spend on your drugs each year. Way back in 2005, it was $2,600. This next year, it's going to be $4,020 initial bucket of money to spend on drugs. That's about $340 a month, okay? One drug can exceed that, right? One drug can be 500 a month. So if you exceed the initial bucket of money that you're given by Medicare, if you sign up for one of these plans, you, you will fall into what has been nicknamed the donut hole. You've heard of that term? That means it used to be back in 2005 through 2010, a place where you had zero drug coverage and people were walking away from the pharmacy counter because they had, they would find out the drugs instead of being 50 bucks, they were now 500, like I, I gotta pay for my groceries, then I can't pay for these drugs and they were walking away. Walmart saw this and Walmart created the Walmart drug program, Kroger, Publix, everybody created programs because people were, again, in pain and, and these places want to solve their, their pain, right? And the government wanted to also. So in the Affordable Care Act, the government said, we're going to get rid of this pain and we're going to shrink down the donut hole from being no coverage to next year being 75% coverage during that time period. Now, everything, of course, there's no such thing as free, right? So it used to be this year with an out-of-pocket cost risk of $5,100. Next year, it's going to be $6,350. But that's a trade-off to make sure that people will have better coverage during the donut hole. Okay? Now, it's very, very important. Yes, sir, you have a question? That's an out-of-pocket maximum there? That's, a, that's what they call an out-of-pocket maximum. And this is not a true out-of-pocket maximum. Once you've hit that $6,350, Let's say you're on a drug, I've had a client that's on a drug that's you know $2,000 a month. You're gonna continue to pay 5% cost sharing. So if you're on a $2,000 drug, uh, that's going to be, help me out, cool financial guy, $100, okay. That's your continuing shared payment that you'll pay, pay. If somebody is low income, they don't have to do all this. We're gonna go over that in a slide from now. But this is important, nobody understands this. And this is not what's important today important today is creating your Medicare account and not understanding that when you go in there, it's going to say, congratulations, there's 26 drug plans in your county. And you're like, yes, I get to look at 26 drug plans. I get to do this for the next two weeks, right? No, it'll say, forget it. 22 of these plans don't cover your list of drugs or one of your drugs or your pharmacy. So here's four plans that cover your drugs. You can put it up to two pharmacies to compare them and, and mail order charges. If you put in just one pharmacy, like your favorite pharmacy, CVS or Walgreens, it'll say, hey, 22 of these plans don't cover your pharmacy. Here's the ones that do. And you're not wasting your time. But it'll also say um, important information because your plan that you're on currently might be a great plan. Every single time you go in, it covers all your drugs. Every year, your pharmacist never has a problem with it. You're like, I got a great plan. You might be on completely the wrong plan because Medicare has done a study it's over $720 per year per person. I'll give you two examples. There was a great plan that was $13 per month about five years ago. 
Next year, it's going to six. Uh, we already found out on October 1st today. I looked up $60 per month next year. That's a $47 increase. That right there is about 600 bucks of waste. But people aren't paying attention. It's just being deducted out of their Social Security check, and they don't realize that there's this big rate increase. They're like, wow, that stinks. My Social Security check went down. You know, darn the government. No, it's because you're on the wrong drug plan. Then they go to fill their drugs, and they're like, wow, it used to be $2 for this drug. Now it's 7 because they didn't pay attention that their preferred pharmacy changed on their plan. I had a gentleman call me in June this year. He said, this really stinks. It's eight bucks a month for these drugs. And I'm like, where are you going? He goes, Walgreens. I said, well, CVS is your preferred pharmacy now. Oh, well, nobody told me. I said, well, you didn't come in for your review. Uh -huh. And you didn't open your packet they sent you, I bet, right? He goes, oh, I don't have time for that. I said, well, for the last six months, you've been at the wrong, spending too much money. And if you wanted to keep Walgreens, I would have just found another plan that would have worked at Walgreens for you. But he just assumed. And so all of a sudden, he's throwing away lots of money. The red company did this one. The red company had a great plan that was $19 a month, and in five years it was $89 a month. Okay, a $70 increase in premium. I did my math right. So you've got to pay attention to this. Okay. So this is important. Once you do that, it'll say, here's the right plan for you. You don't have to make a choice right then. You can print the screen, go to the pharmacist, say, hey, what do you think about this? Everything is hunky dory, then you need to sign up. We do that for free for our clients. You can, of course, do this for yourself, okay? If a person is low income, we have a sheet in the back, uh, up here on the table, excuse me, up here on this table, for low help for low income individuals. I don't imagine too many people in here there, but if you have a friend or a neighbor that's struggling, they need to apply for this. They can either have their Medicare drug plan paid for up to $33 a month, or they might also qualify to have their drugs drop down so they can skip all the rigmarole and just only pay maximum $9 for brand name drugs, $8.95, or $3.60 for uh, generic drugs. So if somebody is struggling paying $200 a month for their insulin, and they can find out they can get it for $9 a month, it's life-changing for some of these low-income seniors. And 20% of seniors that qualify for this have failed to apply for it. And a lot of times it's because they were married and then one spouse dies right or the son or daughter was taking care of mom and she's depleted all of her assets down mom's got dementia that the son or daughter doesn't know that they need to be asking for this benefit okay it's important um they'll, they'll get rid of all the deductibles they'll get rid of the donut hole and put them right into that extra special phase at the end called the catastrophic phase if someone receives medicaid medicaid automatically signs them up for this extra benefit the government gives itself the benefit right and that's important any questions for this? Anyone who ever helped somebody do this? There's a great website called benefitscheckup.org. It's on this sheet. It's the National Council on Aging. And I use that because it'll help people apply for this, but also at that website, it'll tell them, hey, this person might qual qualify for food stamps or for utility bill assistance or for uh, winterizing their home or for <coughs> veterans benefits or other things. So there's some really good information up here, okay? Who here has ever heard of Good RX? All right, good, good, good seniors. Let's talk about Good RX. Before I mention Good RX, remember also some very, very high cost medications. I got a client on a drug that's twenty-five thousand dollars a month. You can't. It's hard to pay five percent of twenty-five thousand a month, right? So some of the uh, major manufacturers have patient assistance programs, but when we're talking about drugs that are not super high cost drugs, GoodRx is an excellent resource because you, you will find out that Medicare made a very bad rule. Medicare allows the drug plans to move certain generics into the brand name category. They took a confusing drug benefit and made it more confusing. Uh, Why would you be looking at the generic drug and find out it's in the $47 brand name tier, right? And a lot of drug plans are doing this. It's a really bad practice that I don't find funny at all. It's it's very aggravating. Well, GoodRx is a great example that when I do a drug review for someone and I find out that 10 of their drugs are cheap and one drug is $47 a month, I'll say, wait a minute, now look at GoodRx. Hey, that's only a $2 a month drug. What the heck? Why is the plan charging $47? And of course, just spend $2 or $2 for that drug. Okay? My own little dog, Biscuit, she's 15 and a half. The vet said, hey, she needs thyroid medicine and it's going to be $60 a quarter. And I'm like, 
That's crazy. I found it on GoodRx for $20 a quarter. And he says, no, 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 that's special pet thyroid medicine. And I said, is it, you know, gravy flavored? What, what's the problem with this, you know? And he's like, no. And I said, come on, tell me the real story. He goes, okay, it's levothyroxine. And I said, I'm going to go to Walmart and buy it. He goes, no, it just matched the price. And I bought it from the vet. I didn't even have to use my GoodRx card except to put the screws to the vet. <laughs> but that's the same thing that can happen to you. You could be at CVS and find out that it's cheaper at Walgreens and show the pharmacist. And a lot of times they'll just match the price, right? But you don't have to use your Medicare drug program. You're not required to. Don't have the pharmacist say, oh, you're on Medicare. You can't use that. I've heard that, and that's not true. I'm not on Medicare, and, I, and I've heard people under regular health insurance say, well, you've got insurance. You can't use that. It's only for people without insurance. No, that's not true. If you use other systems like a Kroger plan or Walmart or GoodRx, you're not going to get credit towards your Medicare out-of-pocket maximums. They're working on that. You might in the future, but not right now. But so what? If it's okay, you're saving money, you're probably all right. If you are a very high user of prescription drugs, you don't need to be doing this. You'll actually, it'll, it's a weird fluke. It'll actually hurt you. If you're using $10,000 a year of drugs, it's probably not a good idea to use the GoodRx card. I know that's counterintuitive, but I can teach you later if you want to ask a question. All right? I've got some of these cards up here also if you want to take a look at them. It is an app for your phone also. On your phone, it's a simple app, and it's better than using the card. When you do it on the app on the phone, it shows you every single pharmacy around you in one second, as long as you have your location in, okay? So it's incredible. You can see that $2 in this pharmacy, and you go down the list of the, the bottom pharmacy, and it's $102. It's incredible to spread on drugs, the price on the drugs. Which, yeah. Yes. yeah, I can talk to you about this later, but my doctor is in medication. I pay $58 for the medicine. I go to a compounding place that the vet recommended. Compounding is different. Compounding is different. Okay. Compounding means they're taking drugs and they're mixing them together in a certain formulation for your dog. GoodRx is not going to do that for you. Are you buying the drugs and taking the drugs to the compounding pharmacy? No. Okay, have a conversation with them because I don't think you'll be able to do it. And a lot of women use compound uh, hormone therapy, right? My question is, are you buying the drugs for the dog? Is that your name? Yes. Uh, it's Biscuit now. Okay. But, but I mean, no, what I'm saying is, does the government allow you to buy a medicine for a dog at a cheaper rate? Or? Yeah. I'm buying it from the vet. Yeah, but the vet, I just showed him the price, and the vet would have said, okay, well, if he wouldn't match the price, he would have just sent the prescription over to Walmart for me, and I would have just picked it up over there. Okay, he just right. said, I've been going to him for now, this is 15 years. I've been going to the vet for 15 years, and he said, I'll just match it. I said, thank you. They tried to tell me Tramadol was special for dogs, too. I'm like, no, it's not. It's Tramadol. Okay. And they admitted that they were overcharging me. <laughs> you got to watch them, right? So how do you get the card? It's right here on the... On the, the resource table there, little, little yellow card, or you go, or, or you go to your application store on your phone, the App Store, and you just download Good RX on the App Store. That's just a, a app like uh, like two two or something. Like it's that. just a free app. It's a free app. There's no charge. They 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 have got advertising and stuff. You know they're they're trying to make money, but it's really an effective uh, app, very effective app. It has gone viral. There are millions of people using this. What's really cool also. Then it will show you alternatives. Hey, you're taking the tablet. Why don't you take the capsule? Maybe there's a price difference, right, between that. Or, or it'll say, hey, there's some warnings about this drug. It actually got really cool information in there, very helpful information. Okay. We have to move forward. And we're going to talk more about the modernizing effort of Medicare, okay, how Medicare has been modernizing. And some of this is really tied to the HMO and PPO side of Medicare. And people are complaining. They're saying, why does that, why does that half of Medicare get all this extra benefit? And why are we getting it? So let's talk about a few things that are happening. Who thinks preventive care is rocket science, miraculous addition to health care? It's been around for 30 years, right? Every health plan I've ever had has had annual checkups. Medicare did not have preventive care checkups until 2005, and they tested it first on the HMO and PPO Advantage side of Medicare. And after five years, in 2010, they said, we're going to give preventive care to everybody in Medicare. It's not perfect. It's not every single thing the doctors wanted, but it's 27 items such as immunizations and checkups and mammograms and prostate exams, et cetera. But Medicare took until 2011 to add full preventive care to all of Medicare. It's there now. It's been there for years. But I still have nurses and doctors who say, well, Medicare doesn't cover that. Yes, it does. But they still think it doesn't. 
That's preventive care. But remember, it was tested first in the HMO and PPOs. Does Medicare cover gym memberships? Going to the gym, does Medicare cover that? Yeah. No. A lot of plans will do that. A lot of plans have added silver sneakers or silver and fit or other gym uh, benefits as an incentive for you to get better and to say be part of the preventive health program. Some of the plans actually pay you money to go get your flu shot. Hey, it's $25. Thank you for getting your flu shot. Here's $25. Thank you for going in for your annual checkup. Some plans are actually paying people a bonus to go do those things. Medicare is not doing that, but Medicare is watching that because 30, uh, people have a 30% reduction in drug and medical costs when they do go to the gym. It's now been studied. Does Medicare cover dental, vision, and hearing aids? No, but a lot of the new plans do. Who has seen Broadway Joe Namath on TV lately? Yes. Not wearing his fur coat, right? But he's on there with that big smile, and he says, don't miss out on all your Medicare benefits, right? Well, it's not Medicare benefits per se. It's under a lot of the new health plans, the Medicare health plans. They'll give you up to $3,000 of dental. I've even seen uh, that. Free dentures on some plans, not all plans. Free hearing aids or low-cost hearing aids. Free eyewear. All these extra benefits. And why would they do that? Not just to sell you something, but that half of all glaucoma is found in a routine exam. Poor dental health leads to poor other health issues. You know, low-grade periodontal infections lead to other misdiagnoses, di diagnoses. Hearing loss leads to brain shrinkage. Most people wait 10 years before they get their hearing done, despite badgering by their spouse. Um, <laughs> right? Well, let's skip over to the last one, number four. This is what really we thought was going to be a lot more expansion this year, but it's going to, it's going to happen more and more. Medicare, under the new administration, Medicare said, we're going to let the plans experiment. If the, plan, if the person is having trouble getting to the doctor and the plan wants to pay for an Uber ride or a Lyft ride, the free taxi ride or low-cost taxi rides with regular people, let them do it. If, if people need to have uh, grab bars installed in their house so they don't fall down, we'll pay for it. But Medicare is not doing it. Medicare allowed relaxing the regulations to let the plans experiment. And here's a good example of something I think will become permanent. If you go to the rehab center right today after the hospital and you go into the rehab center, they feed you three meals a day. Whether you want the jello or not, you're getting it, right? It's a bringing it to you. If you go home, they don't feed you. So Medicare is, is, is allowed, but a lot of the plans, a lot of the plans have, where when you go home from the hospital and you've been in the hospital at least one day and you go home, sometimes you don't even go to the rehab center anymore, you just go home. They're going to call you and say, hey, you know what, you want a week's worth of meals, two meals a day for the, for the week. Do you want it or not? We want to make sure your fridge is not empty. Because there's a lot of social isolation out there, right? And people are like, oh, I got soup in the closet. Well, soup's not good, right? You need to have a regular meal. And this is important. I think eventually they're going to find out that this is a no-brainer. I have a feeling when I'm on Medicare, it's just going to be standard operating procedure that you feed somebody after hospitalization. But they're testing it right now and studying it only under the HMOs and PPOs. Now, there's also a lot of plans that are providing free over-the-counter items, up to even 100 bucks a month of adult incontinence products, toothbrush, toothpaste, vitamins, laxatives, you know, vitamin B, whatever they need, whatever you get at CVS or at Walgreens, we're just gonna deliver it to somebody and they give you a, a credit amount each month to spend. Medicare doesn't pay for band-aids, <coughs> Medicare doesn't pay for vitamins, but a lot of the new plans are doing that. Do not sign up for a Medicare plan because they're going to give you vitamins or dentures. You've got to look at the whole picture. Are my doctors covered? Are my drugs covered? Is it an HMO? Is it a PPO? Don't make a snap decision. Don't meet somebody at Walmart or at the Golden Corral and sign up for a Medicare plan, okay? It happens. If somebody knocks on your door selling Medicare, tell them to get the heck away. Now, Next question. Yes, ma'am. Why, why are they just uh, trialing all this on the HMO and PPOs? Because that's where the, the regulation... That's a smaller population. It hits 23 million, 22 million people instead of the other 40 million people that are in Medicare. So they're going to test it, and it's more of like an innovation lab. The blue company might try something out. The red company might try something out. Let everybody do little experiments everywhere for a couple years until they find the secret sauce, and then roll it out. And that's what they did with preventive care. They weren't sure what the results were really going to be with preventive care and, and what items should we do. So they collected the data from the companies and decided to, to do 27 preventive care items, okay? 
and that got might get revised. But the government had to re relax the regulations. A main regulation they had to relax was kind of weird. You couldn't get paid as a doctor to see a patient unless they were in front of you. You know, telemedicine wasn't allowed. Doing a, a telephone doctor visit or a FaceTime, Skype. But rural medicine said, well, wait a minute, we can't get people to see us. They're out in the country and they can't get here. It's an hour drive. And so they relaxed the rules. They tried it for one year. And then people said, well, it's an hour drive in Atlanta, too. You can't get there anywhere without an hour drive, right? And so they said, okay, we'll forget it. Telemedicine for everybody. If a plan wants to offer doctor visits by phone, they're allowed to, and Medicare will allow them to bill Medicare. They had to relax the regulation. That's crazy, but they had to change the regulation. It was an antiquated thing from the 1980s that they hadn't updated. Every other health plan was trying out telemedicine, that it, you know, employer insurance and everything. Number three, we're going to back up to number three there. This is what's going to save Medicare. All those other things are cool and they're neat, but what's going to save Medicare is number three. The first thing is called care coordination. I want to go over care coordination. You go to the hospital, you go home, they call you and say, are you using your oxygen? Are you going to your physical therapy, your cardiac therapy? Is there anything we can do for you? Because they don't want you to end up back in the hospital again. That's called care coordination, and you should take those phone calls and use those services. They might give you a case manager. You call Julia, and Julia makes sure that you're getting your vitamins and your, and your, your, your services, and you can't get there. Maybe she arranges for, arranges for transportation or something, okay? Now, the big one, though, is chronic illness management. Five people out of every 100 people spend half of Medicare's dollars. Five people out of 100 spend half of the money. It's a lot. And they know that this is a problem. If somebody has two or more medical conditions, comorbidities, their numbers go through the roof. I've got kidney failure and diabetes. I've got heart and lung problems. I've got weight problems and diabetes. Those comorbidities have been tracked and they, they cause Medicare spending to go through the roof. So Medicare is throwing a lot of extra money towards addressing that with special programs for diabetics. We have some plans that are for 2020 that will have free insulin for the diabetics. A couple of them here in Atlanta, at least uh, one, one of you. We have special programs for people with heart and lung cardiovascular problems, major you know, heart failure uh, type of problems. We also have special plans for the low income. If somebody's on Medicare and Medicaid, low income generally means low health outcome. So they realize we're going to give more services to the low income people. We have some plans that, that don't, don't just send a nurse, but send a real doctor to the person's home to do the medical visits. Not a nurse practitioner, but a real doctor, a regular doctor visit. And oftentimes the nurse practitioner will be alongside the doctor to give them the care. And if the seniors are living in a high rise facility with 500 seniors, that might work real well. The doctor comes and sees 10 people all in one day, right? just like if they had to drive over to his office. So things are being experimented with right now because that's what's driving the losses in Medicare is not controlling those um, out of control diabetic costs and other things that are there. Any questions on these? All of Medicare doesn't have this yet. These are things that are mostly happening under the HMO and PPO plans. Preventive care is in all of Medicare though. Enrollment periods. This is the, one of the last screens we're going to get to. Remember, everybody in Medicare gets the initial chance to sign up for Medicare at age 65, or if they're disabled, they get that chance. Everybody in Medicare gets the annual election period, which is getting ready to start October 15th, and it ends December 7th. Why December 7th? So that if you write somebody a plan on December 7th, they're getting their ID card before January 1st. They, they changed that to help us get the ID cards in people's hands. Also, a new thing, the last one is called the Advantage Election or the Open um, Election Period for people under the HMOs and PPOs. What if you found out in January that your doctor wasn't on your plan? Or you found out in January that your sister's on the right plan and you're like, wow, I, didn't, I wish I was on what she had. You get one chance during January, February, March, called a, I call it a Medicare mulligan, to fix and change to a different plan. I helped a gentleman uh, just this past week uh, he lives in Decatur, and he's on, a, he's on a plan that's $47 a month with the green company, and he's broke. He's living on $1,000 a month, and I said, why aren't you on the $0 plan? He's like, I didn't know there was a $0 plan. I go, yeah, it came out January 1. He goes, well, nobody told me. I said, you didn't check, did you? He goes, no. It would have been a snap just to move him. 
So I said, well, you're pretty low income. Have you applied for that extra help under the drug benefit? And he says, no, I haven't. He did. He got awarded the drug extra help for November 1. And so I moved him over to the zero premium plan to save him money every month and also got him $2,000 a year of dental coverage. He hadn't been to the dentist in two years. Now, he didn't know these things. Social workers love to hear this because they see people in problems, right? Well, this is important that it's only January, February, and March. And I am not allowed to tell my clients. I'm not allowed to call my clients and say, hey, you need to use this. They won't allow me to do that. I have to have you do it yourself, tell your neighbors or your social workers, other people, tell people that because this is in the Medicare book on the first page, inside the front page, but people don't read it or understand it. Now, here's where the big deal is, it's special elections. Special elections is for people who are having a special event. I'm 68 years old, I need to activate my Medicare, I'm retiring, I'm gonna leave my employer insurance. How do I do that? That's a special event. Somebody is 78 years old and their spouse dies and they lose their benefits, could happen. That would be a special event. Somebody 75 years old, they get Medicaid or lose Medicaid. That's a special event, but the most typical ones are retiring or moving. Somebody is moving here from Tennessee to Georgia. They are maybe needing to make changes on their plans, different doctor lists, different areas, regions, will change their plan based upon their address changing at Social Security, and we'll move them down here. Yes, ma'am. With the initial election, is that effective on the first of the month or on the date of the birthday? Or Great question. So we'll back up here to the initial election period. All Medicare start dates are the first of the month. So if your birthday is January 15th, your Medicare will start January 1st, okay? Now, my dad's a, a New Year's baby, so he was born on January 1st, so they actually move it up to December 1st for him because it's, it's the way the rule works. But most everybody starts the first day of the month of their birthday, and the um, when you sign up for that initial election period, you're generally going to do it three months ahead of time. I'll show you that on another screen. We'll talk about that. Now, or three months before you retire, if you're able to expose to your HR department that you're retiring, you let the cat out of the bag, then try to do it two or three months ahead of time. We'll talk about that. But the special election period, you get a two-month window. I've moved. A lot of people call me and say, Keith, mom moved here three months ago, and we didn't know about this rule. And I'll say, did you call Social Security and let them know she moved? Oh, no, we didn't know we had to do that. Okay, we'll call Social Security, change her address, and now we've got a new 60-day window where we can make a change to her. Okay? All right. Any other questions about the election periods? These will make you cross-eyed. This is where... This is the reason you go to your CPA, your, your tax nerd, right? He knows all the deductions, or she knows all the ways to get you to reduce your taxes. Well, I'm the Medicare nerd, and I know all the ways to use this to help people out. I don't think we have time for it. Let's talk about penalties. COBRA. Don't take COBRA instead of Medicare. If one person is 66, the other one's 64, take the COBRA on the younger person. The older person needs to go into Medicare. And that's a bad problem. A lot of HR departments get that wrong. Uh, almost always. Part B penalties are lifetime if you don't sign up for your outpatient portion of Medicare properly. It's a lifetime penalty and also potential delays. Part D drug program has a lifetime penalty. Um, it adds up. Both of these add up quite a bit. Part B is 10% per year. Part D is uh, about $4 a year um, that for each year you don't have your drug program. But high income earners also pay extra for their Medicare. So this is what a high income earner is. $85,000 a year on an individual or $170,000 on a household. Somebody might be getting 50 grand a year and all of a sudden they sell the beach house and get a big capital gain. Medicare is gonna raise their premiums two years later because Social Security, IRS is gonna tell Social Security, Social Security is gonna tell Medicare and you're gonna get a letter in the mail that says your Medicare premium has doubled or tripled. You can appeal that and say, well, wait a minute, it was a one-time event and they might reduce it or they might eliminate it. I've had people that get a bonus or, lay, or they're getting laid off and they get a big payment and then they go into Medicare. That's a one-time event. Usually they can get that penalty taken off. Okay? Now, I know you all feel like you're an, you're an expert, right? Don't worry, you're not. I've been doing this for 25 years and I'm, I still learn a few new things today. I found out that Publix, somebody told me Publix is giving you 10 bucks coupon to get your flu shot at Publix. Did anybody know that? I'm the last to know, apparently. All right. Medicare does not cover dental care. If you want dental, either find a plan that has some dental care or buy a separate dental plan, but talk to your dentist before you do this. Medicare does cover critical events like heart attacks and stroke, 
But if you've ever known anybody that's had that happen, Medicare doesn't pay for a, a new bathtub or a new uh, uh, kitchen or anything like that. You might want to have extra coverage. Medicare does not pay to bury you. But here's the one thing that our uh, that Kevin was talking about, home care. Medicare does not pay for assisted living, does not pay for home care assistance. Medicare does not do that. Medicare gives you a total of 100 days of skilled nursing care, and that care does reset if you've had a stroke, and then later you have something else happen, you get another 100 days. But oftentimes you only get about 20 or 30 max. Mm -hmm. You need long-term care insurance or VA benefits called aid and attendance or need to sell the beach house, okay? Because you're going to need a lot of money. Here's the recap. There's two ways to access Medicare. The Advantage plans, HMOs and PPOs are supplements. Half of people at age 65 are doing it one way, half are doing it the other. Your decision is not permanent. We migrate people. We know the rules, how to migrate people between those systems. Medicare does not cover everything. Review your plan every October 15th through December 7th by creating your Medicare login account. We do that for our clients for free. And then the dual Medicare and Medicaid clients and the low income clients and the chronically <coughs> ill clients get special privileges all year long and special plans. So we help them all year. But here's the process. We were talking earlier about the initial election period. Your question, ma'am. Do it three months before your birthday if you are going to need Medicare at 65. If you're retiring, do it up to three months before your retirement target date. That'll give you Medicare about a month to get your Medicare plan set up, your Medicare Part A and Part B set up. Then you can start shopping. Call me, we'll shop for the right drug plan, right other Medigap plans, whatever you need. And then on your retirement date or your birthday, you're ready to go. But don't forget, again, in October, you need to do your review. Even if you retired in June, you need to do your review in October. That's a process. This is my company, Affordable Medicare Solutions. All of our services are free. We represent all of the plans in the market. It's a big pain in the rear end. To certify and train for all these plans when I know there might be a plan that we're probably not going to put a single person on it. Yet I got to go get trained and certified on it. Some little piddle plan. But I do that because I want to have full, unbiased approach to our, rec our Medicare recommendations. All of my employees are also paid in a way that they have no idea what each plan is paying us. But you can see on the Medicare website, it's free public information to see what I get paid to help you do this planning. Medicare authorizes each company a certain set amount of money to pay me to do this work. It does not come out of your pocket. Okay? All right. Any questions? Yes, sir. This is a wonderful presentation, but I'm just wondering, how do you provide all of this free? He just said it. Just said it. So Medicare authorizes each company a set fee to pay me to do this work. So if I do a Medicare drug review, I get paid about 25 bucks. If this doesn't work, if, if somebody's out there as a Medicare agent and they've got 100 clients, it doesn't work. The money's not there. That's why you have to have thousands of clients. And unfortunately, in our business, there's a lot of part-time Medicare people. They do Medicare in October and November, and the rest of the year, they're a tax preparer or they're a pest control. I'm not a pest control guy. They do yeah. Medicare. And um, we're not that way. We're a full-service, true Medicare service center, uh, 12 months a year. We do nights and weekends appointments if we need to, but generally 8.30 to 5.30, Monday through Friday. And uh, that's how we do it. How do you sign up for Part D? Part D is what we were talking about. You have an election period in October 15th through December 7th where you could choose your Part D drug program and sign up for it. Uh, also, when you first turn 65 or activate your Medicare, you get a chance, a three-month period, to sign up for a Medicare drug program. Okay? If you fail to do that, and you sign up later, you'll have a penalty ass assessed to you unless you're on the VA or unless you're a low income. Other questions? Yes. What's the um, income minimum when you want the low income? It's close to the federal poverty limit. But they ask a few more questions about some assets and other things. So just do the online application, okay? If, uh, if you've got significant income, it won't apply to you. Okay? Yes, ma'am. I didn't begin, like, was A through N? Yep. Oh. Are these all the same, just like little differences between companies that provide these? Yeah. So let's go back to the sheet that you have, the green and blue sheet that said Medigap plans. I know what A and B are, and B apparently is drugs. No, stop mm -hmm. it. All of these things mentioned on here are insurance policies. They are not the drug benefit. They are not the basic Medicare benefit. 
It's really unfortunate that the government used letter codes. It's confusing you. I wish they had used Roman numerals instead, right? Because you're, you're cross-referencing the other parts of Medicare, and I wish they would have not done that. So don't even look at those codes there. Look on the front of the sheet, and it says F, G, and N. These are the three primary plans that people are subscribing to in Georgia. They're not picking up those other options. F, G, and N are the three primary codes. And it shows you very clearly that what F covers everything basically at 100%. Plan G covers everything at 100% after a small deductible of $185. And Plan N is very similar, but on Plan N you'll pay $20 to see the doctor and $50 in ER. So don't overthink this. So Almost everybody is subscribing to Plan G now that is turning 65. So does like every company, like Aetna has a, a Plan L? Yeah. That's right. Um, every provider has every a single L. insurance company, I can't use their names, but every single insurance company has the opportunity to offer all of these plans. Most pick and choose and just offer four or five of the codes because they know it's a waste of time to have a bunch of plans that people aren't subscribing to. So most are offering F, G, and N. So can you, is there a definition somewhere, which I have not been able to find, that I can look up and see what does Plan M cover? Right there at the back, right on the back. So this is. It shows you hospital, uh, Medicare Part B, copayments, blood, hospice, skilled nursing, deductibles. It has an entire chart on each item under Medicare. And one thing at the bottom it says is foreign travel. Medicare does not cover foreign travel, but two of these, uh, I'm sorry, uh, six of these plans do cover foreign travel. Don't rely on Medicare to get foreign travel coverage, buy travel insurance. But this chart shows you, it's straight out of the Medicare and you book, this chart is published every year by the government, okay? I know I'm over time. Well, thank you very much, Steve. Thank you very much. All right.